Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ted's Fish Room. The most time-consuming and labor-intensive task in any fish room is changing water. And the larger the fish room, the longer and more labor that task takes. So many of us try to find a way to automate as much of the process as possible. If it were not for my automatic water changer, I would not have the time to be able to maintain all the fish tanks that I have. So in this episode of Ted's Fish Room, I'm going to show you how my water changer is set up and how I use it to make my life a lot easier. Before I describe my automated water changer, let me tell you a little bit about the tap water that's coming into my building. Take a look at these two sponge filters. The filter on the left has been calcified by high general hardness in my tap water. The filter on the right is what a clean filter with no calcification looks like. The calcium and magnesium content of my tap water is so high that when I open the fish room all my filters look worse than this in less than two months. It was a huge problem. I had to solve this problem by installing this 98,000 grain water softener onto the main water line coming into the building. Before I installed this water softener, the water parameters coming into the building were a general hardness of about 15 to 18, a carbonate hardness of approximately 15 to 18, a pH of 8.2, and a total dissolved solids of about 450 parts per million. After the water passes through this water softener, I have a parameters of a general hardness of about 6 or 7, a carbonate hardness of about 4 or 5, a pH of 7.4 to 7.6, and a TDS of only 300 parts per million. But that TDS is almost entirely sodium chloride, which really isn't a problem. When you treat your tank with aquarium salt at a rate of one tablespoon per 10 gallons, you are putting a higher concentration of salt in the water than I get out of my water softener. That salt has the added benefit of discouraging parasites like velvet and ick. Salt is not a cure for those diseases, but the salt can help prevent the parasites from getting a start. Another advantage of my water softener is that it removes chlorine from the tap water as it comes into the building, so I don't have to use a water conditioner. Now, my city does not utilize chloramines, which are much harder to remove. So if your municipality is using chloramines, you may want to check to see if a water softener will remove it. I don't honestly know. Most homes are not using a water softener that's plumbed to the main line of the building like mine is. Typically, a water softener is only plumbed to the hot water line, and the cold water is not being softened. Keep that in mind if you have a water conditioner in your home. When you're mixing hot and cold water, a portion of the water going to the aquariums is not being softened. My fish room is divided into two areas. The main section contains 176 aquariums that are connected to an automated water changing system. The other 52 aquariums are not connected to the water changer. Water flowing to the automated water changer comes through this dedicated tap which has both hot and cold water spigots so I can adjust the temperature of the water. My cold tap is far too cold in the winter and I have to add hot water to the flow. Water passes from the tap through these pre-filters, two sediment filters and one carbon filter. Note the discoloration on this pre-filter. Even with my 98,000 grain water softener, a lot of crap, especially iron, is making it to this point in the system. I need to change these pre-filters once a week. My manifold for the water changer has four zones on it. Each one starts with a solenoid control valve at the back end. These valves are sold for lawn and garden irrigation systems. The valves are controlled by a lawn and garden sprinkler system control panel, in this case a rainbird unit. This little computer allows me to set the days and the times and the amount of time in which each zone gets a water change. Each valve feeds a separate zone in my fish room, which I will describe in a moment. After the solenoid valve, the water passes through a checked valve, which prevents water from flowing backwards through the system. This is not a big problem for my changer 
because the path of the piping goes from the manifold to the ceiling. So there is really no way the water can flow via gravity past this point anyway. The check valves are making sure that there is no fluid back pressure on the solenoid valves, which can shorten the lifespan of the rubber seal in the valve. After the check valve, the water passes through a pressure regulator, which reduces the tap water pressure to 30 PSI. This pressure regulator is absolutely required if you are going to be using small emitters over the tanks. Without the reduced water pressure, you risk breaks and leaks in the system. Above the pressure regulator is a PVC disconnect where I can separate the valve assembly from the line. Do not forget to use one of these connectors. You do not want to have to cut your water lines to replace a bad valve. Here is a tip for planning your fish room. When you buy solenoid valves, buy two times the number that you think you're going to need. Because someday a valve is going to go bad. And two or three years after you set up your water changer, you may not be able to find the exact same valve that you started with. Look for valves in late summer or early fall when most hardware stores put them on sale. I bought all of my valves at Home Depot on sale for only $10 each. My fish room has four zones that are separated by the size tank on each zone. All of these 30 gallon breeder tanks are on zone one. Zone 2 has all 10 gallon tanks. Zone 3 has all 15 gallon tanks. Zone 4 has all 20 gallon tanks. I set it up this way so that each aquarium in a zone will get the same percentage of water change when the system is running. Each aquarium has a 10 gallon per hour valve overhead that flows water into the aquarium and an overflow bulkhead through which water will leave the tank. The overflow drains through flexible tubing to a drain pipe at the bottom of the rack. The pipes run around the perimeter of the room into a floor drain in my tap room. All of the aquariums on my water changer get one third of their volume in new water three days each week. The 30 gallons in zone one will get 10 gallons of new water through the 10 gallon per hour emitter. So the timer on the system will run for one hour on those days that the zone gets a water change. But one hour is too long and I will run out of hot water. So I break that one hour up into four 15 minute periods separated by two hours. The amount of water changed is small and spread out over an eight hour period of time. All of the zones are set up in this way. The tanks in the other half of the fish room are not on the automated water change system because I cannot plumb them easily to the water changer. Someday I will come up with a way to get this side of the room more automated, but it is not a priority. These tanks have been shifted around three times since opening the fish room, and I am still not 100% happy with how the space is being used. Water changes in these tanks are done the old-fashioned way, with siphons, hoses, and time but there are not so many tanks that this is a big problem. I also try to use these tanks more for breeding than the tanks on the water changer because breeding tanks contain fewer fish and do not need water changes as frequently. I plumbed some of the tanks on this side of the room for drain and fill water changes. I can turn this valve and walk away as the tank empties, close the valve when the water level is at the amount of water change I desire, and then refill the tank. Drain and fill is better for breeding fish and raising fry than flow through water changing because drain and fill is perfectly efficient. 100% of the water leaving the tank is old. The water changer is less efficient because some of the new water entering during the water change will also leave the tank during the same water change. Those larger 100% efficient water changes are better for breeding and raising fry because the growth inhibiting chemicals which accumulate in old water are more completely removed. Keeping fish healthy and breeding them are often two different water parameter issues. Most fish can live happily in most tap water conditions but require more specific parameters to successfully reproduce. Soft acidic water is the most common type of water that we need to recreate. If your tap water is hard and alkaline like mine the only way to truly drop the hardness and pH is to use reverse osmosis. My RO unit has two membranes and is rated at 180 gallons per day. I am not going to go into the details of my RO machine in this video, 
as that is a topic for another time. I store reverse osmosis water in these two 250 gallon carboys and distribute it to my aquariums with a hose and a pump. When you design your water changer, you will probably want to hide all the pipes for it behind your racks, but make sure you still have access to all of them. These pipes at the bottom front of my racks drain into the same system as the automated water changer, and I use them to siphon water from the tanks for special maintenance tasks. The fewer buckets you need to carry, the better. My fish room still has a lot of buckets and hoses, and even with an automated water changer, I still spend about two to three hours every day on general maintenance, water changes, and solving problems in the fish room. But it's the water changer that gives me the time to do that. If it were not for that system, I would not be able to manage this fish room by myself. There are many ways to build an automated water change system. Mine is relatively low tech. If you have some experience building and maintaining a water change system that you would like to share with us, I encourage you to leave a comment in the comment section below this video. Or you can comment on the blog page at www.tedsfishroom.com where you will find a full transcript of this video. Well that's it for how my water changer is set up in my fish room. Thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room.